We discussed the theoretical megastructure known as the arcology, including its basics in urbanism and architecture, proposed arcologies on planet Earth, and arcologies in science fiction on today's video. I've always been obsessed with skyscrapers, tall buildings, and also urbanism. Even as a kid, tall buildings fascinated me, which is somewhat weird as I'm also pretty uncomfortable when it comes to heights. But this obsession continued into my teen years and beyond. I remember refreshing skyscrapercity.com to see the construction process on the most incredible super talls of our era, from the Burj Dubai or the Shanghai World Financial Center, the New World Trade Center, or the Chicago Spire. Maybe let's not talk about that last one. I remember pausing the Matrix Reloaded to stare at the skyline of the city on the horizon. As a science fiction fan, the marriage of skyscrapers and urban design with futuristic technology is also fascinating. From sci-fi sprawling megacities like Akira's Neo Tokyo to mega projects like the Space Elevator, there's a lot of fascinating topics to cover. Today, we'll be going deep into the more part of Star Wars Halo and more by examining arcologies, both the defining qualities in the history of arcologies and arcologies as they exist as both potential futuristic mega projects and within science fiction. By the way, if you enjoy these more real world videos compared to my usual type of content, I also did what I think was a really good look at the Technet, which was a proposed North American super state. Anyway, an arcology is a self-sufficient, self-contained mega structure used to house and provide for a community within a massive building. The term arcology alongside much of its theoretical underpinnings was coined by Paolo Soleri. He says the following in Arcology, the city in the image of man. The concept is that of a structure called an arcology or ecological architecture. Such a structure would take the place of the natural landscape in so much as it would constitute the new topography to be dealt with. The concept of a one structure system is not incidental to the organization of the city, but central to it. It is the the wholeness of a biological organism that is sought in the making of the city, as many and stringent are the analogies between the functioning of the organism and the vitality of a metropolitan structure. So as you can see based on that excerpt, in housing a community within one large structure, humans could live more holistically not only with each other but with the environment. Soleri explains later in the book that the closest example that we have to an arcology now would be something like a passenger liner. It is compact, it has a a definite boundary and, as he says, the functional fullness of an organism designed for the care of many, if not most, of man's needs. So I've talked about sort of broadly the concepts behind an arcology, what would it actually look like? Well, Soleri also necessitates that an arcology be a multi-level structure what he calls something existing in three dimensions. And most real understandings of an arcology contemplate it being a massive megastructure. The arcology is completely self-contained and self-sufficient. So anything that citizens could need within the arcology should be provided for by the arcology itself. Everything from, well, things to drinking water, sewage treatment, food, and more. The physical structure of an arcology is not some secondary thing, it's actually a fundamental aspect of the notion. That is because the building itself facilitates all of the supposed improvements that an arcology offers, and only through smart design could the structure be self-contained. The potential benefits of an arcology are obvious. But I think the Cassanti Foundation, started by Soleri himself, provides a good look at the benefits through six design principles, which we'll talk about briefly. First of all, we have what they call urban scale as human scale. And this is a response to something that many forms of urbanism recognize. The fact that many North American cities in particular are built around and devoted to the car. An arcology would be made to human scale, where pedestrians could move through densely organized urban environments efficiently and freely. And again, three-dimensional environments. The second design principle is that of the food and energy nexus. Given that an arcology is a self-contained structure, those within would be connected to that which provides. And I'm not talking simply the farms and the animals that they use to get their food, 
but also the energy systems, the sewage, the air circulation, everything. This would hopefully provide more efficiency, but would also lead to a more informed and hopefully thoughtful populace. Third, we have marginalized consumption. This is the idea that because of the nature of the arcology itself, the community would have reduced energy and material use, not only because of the design of the arcology, but also because of emergent technology. Fourth, we have urban effect. This is all about the benefits of public urban space, and is basically the idea that by sharing space, a community can become more than the sum of of its parts. Fifth, we have bounded density. This ties into one of the arcology's most important concepts that I've sort of neglected to this point, and that is minimizing the impact of humanity on the environment. It says, and I quote, rather than sprawling outward towards a prescribed limit, which may still exceed the resource capacity of the actual environment, arcology seeks to grow upward and inward. Finally, we have elegant frugality. This is sort of an aesthetic of doing more with less and is a contrast with rampant materialism. So I think that's a good look at the theoretical underpinnings of an arcology. And again, as a basic, it's a large structure that's self-sufficient that people live in. That's really what you have to know. And also keep these ideas that I've just discussed in mind throughout this video, because although arcologies may be a while off, if they're even feasible, the principles can still inform urban design, including a cohesiveness with nature, the minimization of waste and environmental impact, efficiency, and how people are placed and more. With that being said, the arcology was imagined as an alternative to not only rural or suburban living, but even tight, dense urban living, which Soleri saw as having its own set of issues, especially when you consider the wider area around cities. We'll start with the real world before going to fictional. And as I mentioned, there have been no true arcologies created on planet Earth, at least. There have been both historical and future concepts. Soleri's Cosanti Foundation actually created what they call a prototype arcology, Arcosanti, in Arizona. In practice, however, not a whole lot of people live here. It doesn't abide, at least by my eye, to many of the principles of an arcology. And of course, it has never been occupied by more than 100 people. Rather, it's more of a showcase of living holistically with the environment and the combining of work slash living spaces over urban sprawl. Another concept for a quasi-arcology, and this one was far more in the conceptual direction, was Buckminster Fuller's proposal for a dome over Manhattan. The idea was that the dome would eliminate seasonality, it would help regulate temperatures, and I guess there is probably the idea that those within would form a more tight-knit community. Obviously, this meets some aspects of the arcology, but also misses others, given that it isn't a self-contained single building, and more importantly, that it would rely really heavily on materials from the outside. Outside, which is really the most important part, in my opinion, of an arcology, the self-sufficiency. That does bring me to another interesting example, and I think this is the best real-world example of the idea of an arcology, and it comes, strangely enough, from Whittier, Alaska. I was first introduced to this in a phenomenal YouTube video from India, Alaska, which I'll link down below, but essentially the town of Whittier is made up of one building. Everyone lives in the building, many people work within the building, services are provided within the building, everything from town administration to the local school to grocery stores and I think this is a really good example of the main concepts of the community side of an arcology at least. Obviously the building is not self-sufficient but a lot of people in the comments for that video definitely understand the sort of attractiveness of this vertical living. From a sociological standpoint I also wonder about the benefits of living in such close proximity with your neighbors how it affects crime. Someone in the comments said pretty well this seems like a modern village. Everyone lives close together, so there's a strong community. Again, certain aspects of an arcology are met here, some aren't. But that also goes without saying, given our current technological limitations. Moving back to the theoretical, I think one of the most famous would be the Xseed 4000. This was a conceptual arcology designed in the 1990s with an imagined height of over 4,000 meters. That's about five times larger than the tallest building we have today, and obviously much, much more massive. Given the population housed within the X seed, it would have aimed not only to regulate and control for local temperatures, but also provide a total self-contained living experience for those within. I.e. you don't have to leave the X seed if you don't want to, ever. We also have a very similar idea in the Shimizu Megacity Pyramid. This is another Japanese 
conceptual arcology, which would have been built over Tokyo Bay. Shimizu seems to be more of a real proposal, albeit obviously one for the far future, and may actually be possible given current lightweight building materials, but that's certainly up for debate. Other far future potential arcology concepts exist. I don't think it's worth cataloging them all. There is also, I'd say, a connected idea of a mega tall skyscraper, which may not offer the same potential for a self contained living, but is meant to house a lot of people. I think the most famous example of this would be Frank Lloyd Wright's The Illinois, which was envisioned as a 1700 meter tall tower. This is one that is probably technically possible with current building materials, but as we've seen with other mega tall structures, including the supposed mile high Jetta Tower, which actually started construction, it may not be possible or at least feasible from an economic or financial sense. But an arcology is different because it aims not only to house a lot of people, but to provide a community which a lot of people could live within. I want to now, before we move on to fiction, discuss a couple more contemporary conceptual projects. Some which, although not meeting all definitions of an arcology, are maybe the closest we're going to get. The absolutely hideous New Orleans Arcology Habitat is designed to hold 40,000 people and provide all amenities and services that they could possibly need. It was meant to respond to New Orleans' unique environment and to be protected against future flooding or storms. It would have been walkable without cars and would have had its own integrated transport system. The arcology would have a population density of 17 times the surrounding city would be carbon neutral, would get power from solar and wind and hydroelectricity. Is it going to happen? Probably not, but it's an interesting concept. Another example is that of Crystal Island in Russia. This would have been the world's largest building in terms of floor space, and similarly was meant to provide a self-contained community for residents if they so choose. Construction was actually planned, but ultimately postponed. All right, so those are the real world examples. Let's now talk about arcology in science fiction. And I honestly think the most famous example of an arcology would have to be from SimCity 2000. These are meant to be extremely high density, very futuristic buildings, which hold a lot of people, but don't give off any pollution. I tweeted about arcologies yesterday, and one that a couple people sent me was the idea of a hive city from Warhammer 40,000. And these certainly meet aspects of an arcology, given the fact that they are largely entire cities made up of one structure, albeit a structure usually, which has been built onto itself for thousands of years. I think the difference is that these do not exist holistically with nature. These are essentially just polluting, resource-extracting mounds of humanity. Let's talk about Star Wars. Star Wars is a universe where arcology certainly exists, and I think the best planet we have to look at is Coruscant. Now, Coruscant itself is not an arcology. It's what's known as an ecumenopolis, or a planet-spanning city. But certain buildings on Coruscant have been specifically called arcologies, and I'm going to make the argument that many would have been. Many of these single building blocks probably would have been completely self-contained. They would have provided for their own energy and heat and everything else, but I don't think anything on Coruscant was anywhere near self-sufficient. That being said, we do see in the Coruscant Undercity that many of these buildings do have their own sort of substructures, which help provide for water and take care of energy, etc, etc. There's also the buildings of Mega City 1 from Judge Dredd. These are buildings which provide everything a resident would need, although only because the outside world seems to be so crappy. When it comes to novels, I'm actually a little less familiar. I know that there are several which are set on arcologies or which detail the sort of self-contained living we've been talking about here. Larry Niven, unsurprisingly, given his usual like of mega structures, has wrote about them several times, which takes me to a couple of questions to end this video off with. The idea of an arcology is pretty utopian. It imagines a scenario where people can live holistically with their environments, where they can live within a community, where they can have less of a detrimental impact on the world around them. Yet we see throughout science fiction that cases like these are often instead dystopian. We get these massive structures like in Judge Dredd and they're just overall awful. Is that simply because these sci-fi worlds that necessitate building these super dense structures are in such a bad state already? Or do you think that there's something else inherent to arcologies which leads them down this dark path in science fiction at least? The other question I have, would you consider something like a halo ring in arcology? What about a self-contained spaceship? Something like the UNSC Infinity? Or is that different? Let me know your thoughts on this video and those questions down below. Is there something else from the real world of science fiction you'd like to see me cover in the future? Look forward to reading all of your thoughts. Until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.